Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. We will be doing picks and bands at the desk today, of course, joined by Han Sama. Cajal's here, too. He's here all the time, though. You're not as special this time around. You were special for being a pro player no, before, he's but now that Hans is here, he is, in fact, the special one. So, <laughs> got to look ahead. Got to talk a little bit about what's going to happen here in Game 2. Hans Sama, I want to go to you first. We hit it lightly uh, in the post game there, but I would love to know what you think about picks and bands. What has to change on the side of Mad Lions? Definitely some uh, playmaking on the mid jungle side because it felt like it was so one sided for Damon, like to make plays and look like they have so much variety, but maybe it's because of their skill. Uh, and also picking Aphilius after. Um, I think it's better to pick MF, kind of, when they ban Trash, when Damon ban Trash, uh, because I feel like MF is just a stronger champ and she can uh, uh, make Aphelios having a hard time uh, in the bot lane. Yeah, I remember you were just talking about that right now, where you're saying, like, Aphelios needs Trash in a way because of the amount of playmaking they have, right? Rakan ult, MF ult, Syndra ult, there's so many things that, MF uh, that Aphelios has to be scared of, so it's very difficult for him to walk up, and the playmaking just isn't really there. And it definitely feels like it is a difficult balancing act where you need to find picks that are going to oh, survive the in the laning phase. <laughs> Mad Lions first and picked it. Wow, oh. hot dropping in. Okay, real they quick. Aphelios, <laughs> TF, Graves, Fandaway, Lucian, LeBlanc, Yumi. MF already locked in. Now we get to see what the response is from Dom1. So what did he carry you looking at here, hands? With them first picking MF, and banning Aphelios and Lucian banned, what kind of bot matchup do we expect from uh, from Damon for AD carry? Oh, uh, <laughs> I kind of need to remember actually because I'm not playing the same patch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Been playing That's a lot so of solo queue, yeah. let's, let's keep up. Gore Drinker uh, is still very good. You know, I would play Zaya here. <laughs> 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 no, I just need to like... Yeah. Oh, but Ezreal, like, oh no, maybe not. Maybe not. Well, they did go Lee and Syndra before. They might look for some kind of early rotation for top side. They have red side now, right? And the last time we saw Damon get quite a few counter picks or good lane matchups despite being on blue side. Now on red side, a little bit more plow power, and there's the kid. Oh, that pick. That pick? I hate that pick. Why do you hate, hate that pick? Uh, I wish that that pick. So <laughs> I picked Jin and it was so useless. <laughs> Every time I see this champ, yeah. Uh, the guy is reported. But <laughs> He's reported okay. every time this champ's picked. I appreciate that, <laughs> but as I am not in this game and lack the, the power to report ghosts for locking in this champion or the coaching staff, talk to me about why you don't like Jin in the current meta. Does he just not bring it up to the table? Um, I am just not. It's just not the champion that you can carry with. It just like I guess it helps your team, um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, what I got. I feel like when I was playing Jin against uh, yeah the last match against C9, I felt like uh, yeah I just wish that I had Aphelios there. <laughs> Yeah, well, Jin locked in now, and I think support matchups what we're looking at. We got a blind pick Jace from Armored, so we talked about lane prior, we talked about pressure. Looks like Mad Lions are going for it, right? They've taken the MF kind away from Damwon. Leona gonna come out, which you expect, standard stuff. And the Jace blind pick, which now Khan is gonna have to counter pick on 4-5. Mid lane still not picked up yet. Rise and Silas still available. And I think if we're, if now we see the Jin locked in for Ghost, we know he's not gonna be the center of attention, he's not gonna be the crazy hyper carry like the Aphelios, then what are we looking for on the side of Damwon Kia to round out the rest of this composition. Expecting some kind of carry top um, for Damon here. Of course, they can ban away jungler. Sin's already taken away. Maybe they want to look towards things like a Jarvan to cover your AD carry. It's a winning jungle matchup for Lee Sin, though. Maybe even things like Trundle could be annoying for the side of Damon if they want to take that away. Uh, obviously, with the Leona frontline. But solo lanes is what we're looking at for Damon. In general, in your experience on this patch, Hansama, what do you look at when you look towards something that's going to be solid on the top side. I know you yourself are not a top laner, but you have a very vocal top laner, and Oda Wamne on your team. He has very strong opinions about matchups, in my experience. It's either the best matchup in the world or it's completely <laughs> unplayable. What do you see in this situation that could maybe potentially be locked in? Kennen, of course, a pick that's still up and available. We've seen a lot of blind picks in the tournament. What would your go-to in this case, or Rogue's go-to? Hmm. Definitely something something top that you can play around because you definitely don't want to play around the bot uh, with those champs. I think those champs are very like uh, weak side. They could be like weak side champ. You uh -huh. can just bring Leona to top, pretty much top meta. Uh, they want to play at that one. So I would uh, say just something that like can pressure top a lot with uh, having this in there. It's like so much uh, play potential. Yeah, setup especially right there is the cannon which is being thought about for Damon, brings a lot of team fight. Obviously, Jace does win that lane in isolation, but Kennen has obviously great team fight and good setup for Lee Sin. So it looks like we're gonna get Khan's first Kennen of the tournament locked in, and now it's up to Mad Lions. Blind picking mid, picking jungle. Things like Trundle are up, which could do well in the front line. Um, a lot of AD junglers we've seen. Uh, Elio has Kiana. Wait, but 
don't they have like three champs that have done diamond skin already? Or three champs with diamond skin? <laughs> they, have they, they are doing this on purpose. <laughs> They're doing this on purpose. They have Jin. What are the what are the diamond skins? Huh, that's play by play analysis, right? There. Oh, I'm just gonna oh. tell you right now. That's usually that's like the fun facts. That's not what I was expecting. No, I love it. Okay, we're going for diamond skins, but it, oh, I, I don't think we're there yet. Though we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Now we have something like the Oriana locked in jungle. The last remaining piece of the puzzle. You brought up the Kiana already, Kendall. We'll see how many Damwon skins make it to the surface. But as much as this champion has been nerfed, Viego has looked really, really solid on Western teams. Here's the Jarvan, though. Something I was talking about. It's a losing jungle matchup in isolation, but they have an immobility carry. Now they have an immobile top. Jarvan makes a lot of sense. The only mobile mid really left for Damwon is, I was going to say Silas, but Azir does kind of work as well. But again, Showmaker on a mage. This doesn't look like the Damwon we've been seeing throughout the tournament, where they love to play 1 3 1 and just play for side lanes and play for solo lanes. Definitely taking their time, debating, and it will be the Azir now locked in. Now, earlier, Hans, you talked about playing towards the top side with this Jin Lee on the bottom. What do you expect from Don Juan Kia in the early game? What lane should they be focusing on? Mm, maybe focusing on... Maybe... Uh, it's most likely gonna be like Leona, Lee doing things around. I'm not sure which lane they want to play on, but they could move around and just play with whatever pressure they can get in the map. Yeah, and I think if you look at both drafts, the biggest pressure point for Mad Lions is top lane. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, Jace into, into Kennen, you expect Elio to play up there, maybe go towards mid and get some mana out of Shomi because you're early, like an EQ, force him out and then help mid get the push because Humanoid was struggling last game. Basically, both these comps are very heavy team fights. The only difference is Mad Lions have a Jace which can play over side and they can play for 1-4. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, for Mad Lions, they are in the realm of team fighting. Definitely somewhere where, as LEC representatives, we generally tend to trust them. They are a very strong team fighting team if they can come into the game even. And final predictions, gentlemen. Let's take the nameplates off. Just in terms of compositions overall, Hansama, whose composition do you like better? Mm, I think I would like. Uh, I think I would like Damon better, kind okay. of, because they have like so much CC. I'm not sure actually, but uh, uh, Madeline doesn't look bad either. Not sure which is the best competition, actually. That's exactly where we want you to be, Hansama. <laughs> Stuck in the middle, uncertainty. That's how we do yeah. it. Is <laughs> there one that, side that, you favor that, over the other? Fit. I would favor Mad Lion slightly. Really good team fight, really good engage, really good shutdown enemy carries, and a Jace for side lane. Right, absolutely. We're going to have to see what happens as we hit, head to our casters for game two. Thank you very much, Drake. Let's get on into the second game of this series. Hi, everyone. Good to see you. By the way, Hans Summer drew the uh, Mad Lion on that little red minion in front of you. <laughs> the veritable artist. True. Well, he's actually an artist, though. Yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah. I remember learning about that after the, I think it was after the SKT Misfits years. They had some really nice videos yeah. on it. Yeah. Uh, on, on his art, but very talented in multiple ways. There you go. He's coming for Lion and Cadre's job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, let's jump into the game. Both teams kind of spread out on different sides of the map. Mad passing towards bot, Tom one doing the same thing up towards the top side, seeing if they can find any potential picks or early game shenanigans, but nothing will come about. And I feel like so much of this game is, is going to come down to the jungle matchup. You know, Jarvan has been a bit of a flop uh, at World so far, and Elioia, you know, he has to have a good game, it feels like, not only against Kenya, but throughout groups. The difference between him and wins and him and losses was enormous. You know, he's such a key contributor for Mad Lions. And if he can't get going like he couldn't last game, they rarely have success. And Kanan is going to have the preferential 1v1. So it kind of puts a lot of pressure on Elioia to find ganks. And a lot of the time, it's how much damage he's able to do as a portion yeah. of his team that really influences things. Remember his Kiana games, 2 0 on that across the course of groups. And he was putting out a lot of DPS here on the Jarvan. I personally am a little worried for how much impact he can have, especially since Jarvan has been struggling at this Worlds as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Elio and losses 9.9% of the team's damage. Like, that's that's similar to support numbers, right? Just to put that in context. And, you know, when he's not able to get going, they look like a completely different team. He feels like a player who plays so much off of confidence, off of momentum. When you watch him in the player cams and something goes bad, you can really see it on his face. It's definitely true. Well, let's see what he's able to do on a slightly more early game focused jungler in the Jarvan. He's starting red, gonna do Raptors. I wonder if he'll do the fast level three route, where he'll just go straight towards the Grom. Based on his pathing, he is looking at that, so he may be looking for an early gank somewhere on the map. But thanks to Kazi and Kaiser not assisting their jungler, they were able to get the early pull. And right now, this will be the first level two. So this time, Mad have Pryo in the bot lane. 
Top is relatively even. Meanwhile, Showmaker, as you expect for the Azir in the other game, will have this early prior. But I'm just keeping my eye on the Jarvan right now. Canyon is in a full bot side clear, moving into his top side jungle. And Kazi and Kaiser, I imagine, will use this priority. We'll get... No, okay. They're not going to put Deep Vision. They're just going to bet a little bit. Straight top. Exactly. And straight to top lane with the level three. And I think you have to go for these kind of plays, right? You can't play it the same way Lee is. You farm more slowly. He's got to look for these plays. We'll see if he can connect. Flash away from Khan. Early on, there was already in the Lightning Rush and manages to get away. But that is the first flash blown. Canyon was able to get an extra camp in that time. And Yoya may look for the repeat as Armut flashes in. Khan, flash EQ. He dodges away from it, but it's knocked back by Armut. And Khan will be first blood. Elioya takes it. I love it. Back to back ganks top here. Force the flash. Don't commit your flashes. Then committing the flashes to set it up. Armut jumps in, slows him up, and we have scraps on that bottom side. That's the kind of play that you need to see from Magic get going early. The concern is Canyon got topside scuttle. He's level four, and he can meet you at your blue buff now. Oh, he knows. Canyon, this is what he does. Okay, so you've just punished my lane. Ah, but let's see if I can punish you. Canyon has the level advantage, but he's not going to risk it for the time being. I lied. He's coming right back, and I, oh. I think this is the better play, because look, Showmaker just chunking out humanoid HP to force this 1v1 between the two junglers. Absolutely. I mean, he just waited until the vision actually expired on him. Elioya, though, is able to uh, get that. Canyon no smite there, so yeah. that was one of the big difference makers, but uh, I really love what Showmaker was doing in particular in the mid lane. He was making it as hard as possible for humanoid to come and assist, uh, but let's have a look back at this top gang. Yep, just goes hammer form to the skies, you know, trying to get that slow to actually set it up. This was the initial play, of course, forcing out the flashes, not committing their own, and then just waiting for cooldowns. The slow comes through. Even though it's a great sidestep from Khan, when you get hammer form knocked back, there's just no way you're going to be able to get back to the tower. And of course, those cooldowns for Kennen that early on, it's still very long. Too. Yeah. The moment that he used them to try and clear the wave, that was El Yoya's window to try and set up a punish. So they started off the game by getting Armut ever so slightly ahead, but now you expect Mad to try and repeat this process. Because this wave has been pushed underneath the tower, this is actually an opportunity to set up a stacked wave up towards the top, and maybe they can threaten to dive. With Khan, no flash. Showmaker still has TP, which is something that Mad will have to take into consideration. But let's see if Canyon can do something on the other side. I'm actually so surprised that they didn't take bot scuttle. You know, we see Mad, they're just assuming it was taken by Canyon. And so they're not going to it, and Canyon isn't going to it. So bot scuttle is just actually sitting alive here. Five minutes into the game, Canyon getting a bit sneaky. That ward did spot Barrel, and his sweeper did not see the ward. So he is not aware that he has been spotted. How safe is Armour going to play? He instead pushes up, tries to clear out the way, but Beryl is here. He was spotted out. Canyon is in the vicinity as well. Khan low, stunned there onto Armut. Armut's trying to keep this wave as far away from his tower as possible to try and avoid this dive, but Beryl is having none of it. Flash forward, then it's played. Beryl tanks it, and Canyon takes the kill. Beautiful play from Damwon, and exactly what they needed to do. Yes, Armut tries to keep the wave away from the tower, but Canyon, he's just, he's so smart because he realizes, hey, look, enemy Gromp is spawning now. We can look to try and punish this, but now the TP's going to come back into lane. Beryl has no flash here. Battle Dance into the Grand though. Entrance was a possibility, but nope, as you say, they can't punish it, Belly. And I just think it was really smart pathing from Canyon. You know, Matt is assuming he went to bot side to take that second scuttle. Instead, he goes back up towards top side. Engage. There's the knock up. And you, we both said they can't punish it, but Khan is caught out once again, Mad Lions. <laughs> they can't. They can't. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, was, I, I really got caught off guard by that one because... Uh, that I was not that funny, Medic. Stop <laughs> laughing. Stop, stop that. <laughs> I was trying to do it, it in my head at the time. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, but I he's always... trying to have a serious cast he's here. Like what is, he's what like is this guy doing? Freak. That's oh. he's just... Oh, goodness. Now, El Yoya is looking to try to do to Canyon what Canyon has been doing to him. And now, look, Kaiser and El Yoya have grouped up. 80 carries have now been left. They're the new top lane. As Khan, only level five. Oh, he knows. The pings are coming out. He knows. This is uh, pain as a top lane. You're just staring at those minions, three watching three them top. die. The mid lane is really important here. Showmaker has TP, and Humanoid does not. Damon here could look to chase this one forward. El Yoya going in. A triple knockup coming out from Kaiser. And here comes Armut. Bring down the hammer and put the nails in the coffin of Khan once again. Canyon able to escape. Here's the TP from Showmaker. Oh, but it's cancelled with the shockwave. Battle underneath the tower. It's a double for El Yoya. Canyon trying to get away. But he just can't get the damage down. El Yoya is a monster in this game. Four kills at seven minutes here. 
monstrous advantage for the Mad Lions and some hope again here for the LEC fans. And so much credit needs to be given to Humanoid because Showmaker, if that TP comes through, this play could look very different. And you need to keep your eyes on the minimap because the moment the Mad commit to this play, Man, they realize, hey, look, we can, we know we're going to win this fight. Armor has a level advantage. The CC comes up beautifully. And then as the Shockwave comes through, Humanoid's like, I've got to stop West. Beautiful Shockwave. The whole Mad Lions top side really coming up clutch to get them this early game lead. That was really nice from Humanoid. It was, it was critical that he actually stops that, especially with the Zir having ultimate and flash. Yeah, exactly. He probably all die. Yep. So yes, he has to run through the tower to actually do it, but there is the emotion, there is the reaction that you're expecting. El Yoya has a huge advantage, Now we got to see what he can do with it. And we come back to what exactly what you were saying at the beginning of this cast as hell, which is that El Yoya looks best when he has something he can have some agency on. We're not trying to call him a bad Graves player, but his ability to impact the game, it's night and day between game and one, uh, game one and game You're two, again. he's capable of, and Matt just want to keep attacking Khan. Kaiser and Kazi apparently have had a little spat in the break because he is not laning with his AD carry anymore. Instead, Arbut's his new best friend, as Khan is caught out. Slicing Maelstrom will be enough to save him as he flashes away from the last bit of damage. Okay, so Khan will get away with his life. The problem that for them, though, is that the Herald is going to drop on the top side. Yes, Canyon will be able to get the Drake, but also they get the flash out from Khan, and Matt don't invest any summoners. So they still are net positive, and think of all the farm that Khan continues to lose as a 30 CS d uh, difference is now developing in the top lane. Absolutely. In, in my eyes, immediately, when I see something happening like this on the top side of the map, I say, okay, well, what if Dalmont got for themselves on the bottom side? They actually have gotten nothing. They are down a little bit here in farm. They're now pushing back and trying to get some plates, trying to fight back and really get something for themselves. But Matt have gotten so Look much more on the top side, and now the tower's just dead. Definitely one of the weaknesses of Jin compared to something like an Aphelios that can just rip through They're gonna those dive towers. Him. They could dive him here. Khan, no stopwatch on that cannon. Hexic like Odonator is No, they finished. will dive him. They're definitely gonna dive him. <laughs> they don't know where Showmaker is right, right now, but they know that he is not on his way. <laughs> the control wall cleared out. They're looking for this tier two cannon on the way as well, but Mad Lions will not go for the dive. Second time this game, Benny, you predicted something to happen and the opposite has happened. I I'm might just start listening <laughs> to Azale a little bit more. Just, <laughs> you could see Kaiser's positioning was clearly, if it weren't for that control ward, I think they would have gone for the dive. To be fair, my, you know, my prediction has been kind of bad too. I didn't think that you would actually laugh at that joke earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so Benny and I are, you know, we're, we're, we're scaling as the series goes on. We'll get better, Medic. We'll, we'll get better. We'll yeah, get better. We'll, we'll, we'll shape up. Now I'm looking at these TPs as well. Khan does have TP and Azale, if you could just bring up the minimap for you. I can. See. Look at all these traps that are actually hovering around Kazi. Um, this would mean more if Damwon was kind of, well, they have the push in mid, but they're not actually setting up any kind of play towards the bot side. But there's also this potential villain, uh, villain? Uh, vision that they could look to leverage if they wanted to try and trade for that bot tower. I mean, it's just demonstrated where the vision is. You know, Matt has all these wards up on the top side, you know, this area. Obviously, Damwon's is all down in the bottom quadrant around those dragons. And they're just playing on very different sides. They're trying to create advantages. But thus far, it has been Matt getting so much more. You know, they're 3.5k ahead here. Ten and a half minutes in. That is a monumental lead. And now trying to get down here and punish Ghost. So yeah, they've now translated their lead from top side to bot. Khan is level seven, has TP and has ult. Showmaker is rotating from mid towards the bot side of the map. And while Matt is focused on securing these plates, let's see how this fight actually plays out. Humanoid has the TP. He's going to catch that top wave as Khan also has a TP to match. Mad Lions, two mythics to the good in terms of inventory right now. You can see the Eclipse finished alongside the Gore Drinker. It was a sub 10 minute Gore Drinker for El Yoya. Those early kills paying off in terms of damage. Showmaker here, chunked out by Armiton. I expect this Jarv and Jace combination, the double J's, just to keep roaming the map together. Canyon will walk into his Raptors being stolen, does have the smite, and yeah, he's gonna secure that one, along with the little Raptor there. Now, what I will say is, we didn't mention it earlier, but you gentlemen may remember the top lane dives from Mad Lion to group stages. Mm -hmm. They've improved. <laughs> Versus Good Ole, job. Good yeah, job. yeah. Good job, Mad Lions. I have no memory of those dives. No, you the game don't started at 20 <laughs> minutes, didn't it? Neither does Mad, because they blacked out during the dives. <laughs> That's actually why they went so poorly. 
<laughs> yes, Mad Lion's definitely improved <laughs> that dives as Darmon looks to set up down towards the bottom side. Kazi's been doing a good job of just backing away, accepting perhaps a Krug here, a Krug there, and allowing Ghost to take these tower plates. And he has to do that. You know, if you're a 3v1 on the bottom side of the map, as an AD carry, you have to retreat from that. Because of that, he's oh about 600 word. gold behind. But look at the top lane difference. Three now, hang on, thousand TPs. TP. Here it comes. Looking for the ward. There's a Cataclysm Ghost. will use his flash preemptively to get away the Solar Flare. Popped as well. Armor unable to hit the Shock Glass, but he can bring down the Hammer. Ghost forced away. Barrel already dead. Ghost trying to do what he can to survive this, but Armor able to get away from Showmaker. The Shuffle does not do enough as Mad Lions take two in the bottom lane. So Mad Lions find themselves more kills on the bot side of the map, and the expectation for Darmon is that they can just trade on this side. Can you? Oh, can you? oh, that was so smart. Oh, let's take Maker's a coming, they want more. That was a Grand Canyon play from the Darmon jungler. Elioyo trying to get away. Bullet time's going to keep him locked in place. Elioyo will get the kill. He goes unstoppable. Canyon gets one back for Darmon. That was unironically a very good zoning all. Yeah. Yeah. I actually was. couldn't walk yeah, past it really, at all. Really was. Because we, I think that everyone in this game could see that what he wants to do is W over to Showmaker yep. to get to safety. Uh, so he's like, okay, I'll just ult Showmaker, and then your one point of safety has now been removed. Karzi just hitting him with the, with the Gandalf cosplay. You shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> we can see in the axe replay here. Uh, let's have a look back at this. So they forced up the There's oh, we not don't have time. Even though trying to trade with Khan, but the slicing Maelstrom comes out. Khan with Nogui's skin will not play the champ as well as Nogui did last year. Humanoid gets one. He's looking for Showmaker here as well, who will slide in. Humanoid will die, but he makes it a one for one. This was live, but you would be forgiven for thinking it's a replay, given how often we have seen this happening to Khan this game. Yeah, yeah we definitely. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Thank you. I thought you were going to take it, Humanoid. That was what I was expecting. <laughs> then you flipped it. You had me in the first half. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Gotta keep so, them guessing. Gotta keep them guessing. Now. Khan will end up falling short once again. You can just see how weak and how much he has been shut down in this early game. And obviously, we've been talking a lot about Mad because after the first game, it looked done and dusted. As Showmaker now goes in. Guys are here. Solar Flare's going to hit. Showmaker has to flash away. Yeah, he's going to join the fight. And Yoyo on his way. Five kills rests on his shoulders. And because of that, Dam One will retreat from the play. And I feel like that Mad is so much more comfortable in a situation like this because when they're the ones that get to decide when everything is happening, that is when Mad looks the most comfortable. That is when they look best. And you know, we talked about Elioya earlier, but he is that driving force. And when you combine him alongside Kaiser, look at the both of them: five zero three two zero five. It is these two working in tandem that is making so much of the action happen. And what I wanted to say was, if you contrast this to Game One. It's like a completely different team that we're seeing, mm -hmm. but also you can see how much different this team looks when they have a little bit more agency in the draft. It's almost symmetrical though, because Dam one at 50 minutes in game one were about three and a half, four thousand gold ahead. Here, Mad, the team making the plays, the team looking for these fights, are four thousand gold ahead as we get towards that 15 minute mark. Now, a lot of that rests in the top lane for Armor, but also on Elioya with this Jarvan and what you want to start doing for the rest of this game as mad is translating that gold into leads on the rest of your team as well. Absolutely, and, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to move around the map, trying to take over the enemy jungle camps, steal those away, starting to get some objectives here. Now they obviously have the one Infernal. They're grabbing a Rift Herald here and likely could just use it mid, try to get more gold there, open up the map even more and make it more difficult for Domino to actually approach the next dragon. I think it's necessary too against an Azir. When you have that kind of yeah. wave clear, it's that much harder to siege. Uh, so I do like this play from Mad Lions, and I think it makes the most sense. Now, obviously, Mad is in a very good position right now. Uh, and when we kind of contrast it to last game, I would say that the problem for Mad was that they didn't have many avenues back into the game with their composition. That's not entirely yeah. true for Darmon. You do still have the late game of Showmaker on the Azir. Cannon, even though behind, still offers a huge amount of utility. So even if the Cannon just goes in, ults and dies, that can still offer a lot of value. And then Ghost on the Jin can offer a lot of long range threats. So I still think that Darmon, even in this position, do still have some late game options to still come back into this game. They absolutely do. And, and that's one of the reasons I actually think, you know, Mad should just keep playing for Vision and play 1-4. Because while Kennen, yeah, if he gets a five-man ult from behind, he can have value. He can't do anything against a Jace when you're this far down in the 1v1. So, you know, play towards the sides, keep creating these pockets of Vision where Armlet can feel safe to push, feel safe to really extend that advantage. Because I think that the 4v4 is actually more preferential for Matt. You see, Damwon have been trying to find a few picks over the last few moments. Haven't come up with anything as of yet, but if they can continue to chip away at Mad's vision, they will be able to get themselves into those areas of darkness. For the moment, though, it's Mad in the driver's seat. 
5,000 gold ahead at the 17 minute mark. So you'll notice these two wards just above Kaiser in Darmwan's blue side jungle. And that's because Mad, rather than threatening mid, is actually looking to try and secure themselves the bot tier one for the time being. And the main reason for this is because, as Azale was just saying, their biggest strength right now comes from their side lane. The fact that Jace is in this position is fantastic for Mad Lions. So what they'll do is, let's funnel more gold into him. Let's secure this tower and let's actually push it up to the tier two where you can get so much more gold thanks to these tier two buffs. Remember, it was a couple, well, it was a few patches ago yeah. now, but the additional gold that you get opens up the map even more. And if you secure these as well, guess what? It gives you direct access into the mid lane because you push in this wave, make the rotation over, and then you can start threatening that tier one in mid. And this whole quadrant is basically dark for Damwon. This is the only wards you see right on screen getting cleared out. There's one by the wolf pit. They are securing the vision as they need to do, so the play is preempted very well by that setup. But they're going There's in. The bullet time. They're looking for go-to wolf flash and heal. Khan on a good flank here. The flash slicing Maelstrom, and Khan rips Mad Lions underneath the tower. They were just about to escape, but the kickback onto Kazi will spell his doom. Canyon ticking, ticking, ticking. He'll go down as well. A one for one in the mid lane. I cannot believe that that was a one for one. That is the gold lead in action there for the Mad Lions. Back in Showmaker dies before his bodyguards can arrive. Once again, a one for one as the shutdown goes over to Ghost. Armored looking for a shot blast here, but can't find his man. And you can see that even though Damwon is down, they are definitely not out. Canyon makes an insane play on the Lee Sin, and he nearly got away with it too if it weren't for that ignite that came out that from meddling Kaiser. Meddling Kaiser. Yeah, and now the TP coming into bot lane. Khan, it seems that Mad Lion's saying, hey, you're not allowed to kill. We've got to punish you for that. Humanoid with the command protect, shields up Elioya under the tower, and then thanks him for the kill. And it was huge that actually Mel we saw Elioya survive, just barely able to get out of there because he's a 500 gold bounty. That is a significant significant swing if that goes on one of the Dom 1 carries, but they want to find a play here. El is out of mana. Does he even have enough for a flag and drag? Doesn't have the mana for the EQ combo. Canyon slow dead by the command dissonance, and actually Mad Lions will be able to escape. Whew. That was close, but this should be a free drape for Dom 1. Actually, maybe not, because Mad, actually a few of their members have been able to reset. Let's have a look back at this. So this is quite an aggressive dive from El Yoya. He's saying <laughs> we can just one-shot him with the Orianna ult, but it ends up falling short thanks to the flash coming out from Ghost and the re-engage, Khan flashing over the wall. And just keep your eyes on the least in here. Watch this. Q into flash, into Gore Drinker, gives him all his health back, oh. into kick. And he almost gets out, but again, it is that Ignite that just finishes him off. Crazy play there coming out from Pan. Yeah, that three-man core trigger was huge. 500 and something health back. And then a little bit of a trade. What do you think killed? I, there was it that must have been the bouncing view? grenade. Yeah. It had to have been. Yeah, but Elioya able to survive, keeping his uh, bounty intact. And out of all of that, Mad actually extended their gold lead yep. even more. They're now sitting at about 6.3k, uh, which is... Pretty impressive, again, considering you look back as to how their early game went last time around. Uh, and we kind of have to harken back to the MSI matchup when Medic, when we were casting it, I remember it was finishing game one and we were being like, well, I guess it's fast 3-0 a day. And then game two, immediately Mad Lions bounce back just like they have in this one. And uh, I think that Mad Lions really wanted to get the revenge against that one and showcase that they're not just some pushover team that you can get an easy best of five against. I think the difference between this series and the series at MSI was when Mad did win, it was even until around the mid game and Mad won team fights. Whereas this game yeah. has very much been Mad putting Khan in the dirt over and over and over again, and then translating that onto the rest of the map. And it's so interesting because both teams kind of have, you know, evolved since MSI. You know, Dom won, when you're looking at them and you're looking at how Mad actually won their games, it was really by abusing bot. But Ghost has actually had, I think, quite a bit of growth, it's fair to say, since coming back in summer with Dom won. He had looked better. He has not been getting taken advantage of in groups. And he's been pretty solid across these first two games. But it is actually Mad, you know, attacking Khan, who is thought to be the biggest improvement for Dalmon because of the added flexibility. You know, coming in MSI, everyone's like, ah, he's the Scion one trick, he's the tank guy. At, at, at Worlds, he is just slamming everyone and playing everything. It certainly is. And uh, again, like coming into this draft, we were like, oh, well, here we go. Khan's going to get counter pick. Khan's mm -hmm. going to be able to play well in this top side of the map, and Mad's done their best punishing. But now comes the Baron. And we saw some crazy Baron steals yesterday. Canyon is on the Sin, one of the best for stealing, but Mad, what a fight. They're just looking for Beryl here, already half his health gone. Goes in with the Zenith Blade, pops the stopwatch as well. And look at how low, low Elioya is, kicks back straight into the waiting arms of the bullets from Ghost's gun. One for one trade once again, but that's very much done one favor. Now this is a 
very typical Mad Lions play. When they have a lead and Baron is alive, they use it as a means to force a fight, and we saw that. The problem for them was that they engaged on the Beryl, and what Beryl is weak, still a Leona, still very tanky, bought a lot of time, and then Ghost was able to leverage the long range ult with a really good kick once again from Canyon to get that shutdown money onto El Joy. And you can now see a whole 1k over Kazi and Damwon have been able to close that goal gap ever so slightly, even though they are still at a deficit. And it was really interesting. I was actually expecting Khan to come up on the mini map. He's, a, he's in mid. I was expecting him to move over and try to flank here, but it was actually him just clearing out the waves, pushing it in. I think he thought this was a lost fight, but the beautiful kick straight into that ultimate shot there, 800 gold onto Ghost. And Damwon do hold on. But, Medic, I hope you're ready, because Mad, 100%, is about to force another Baron. <laughs> I'm gonna say, let's fight again, because this is what Mad love to do. They leverage Baron as a tool to force fights when they know they have an item uh, advantage, but I think the thing they have to be concerned about right now is, look at Ghost, two items now been completed, uh, and against multiple squishy champions, Jin can definitely hit hard. And I wouldn't mind seeing Mad just continue play sides, stack towards Soul, because I think that Mountain Soul is insanely good against this composition here from Damwon. You know, Jin does more damage as you get lower on HP. The shield actually is very effective against Jin ult. It's very effective against a lot of the bursts that Kennen and Lee Sin, these champions, are going to put out out front. So I, I would, don't think they need to really rush it. You know, they're in a good spot. You're still winning sides. Play 1-4, take away vision, take these guaranteed objectives, because if you go to Baron, and you get Flash Cannon altered, or you lose the Baron to a Baron Steel. That is a way they can lose this game. And there's no pressure on them, because they have pretty good scaling too with Orianna, with uh, with the MF as well. Kaiser and Elioia looking for this. Cataclysm coming out. Cards is going to step wait right into the captive audience. Bell going back onto the back line. Kermit Cool comes out. Bell is down. TP. TP behind Humanoid. He tries to flash away, but the Emperor's survival will catch him. Showmaker pops the stopwatch to stop the Shockwave, but the Bullet Time will still rip him to shreds. Mad Lion still looking for this fight as Kaiser underneath the tower pulls a stopwatch of his own. Armor putting the damage down onto Ghost. He's going to get locked up as well. And Armor just went too deep. Dom One once again winning out this fight. Dom One continue to show why they are such a good team fighting team with an excellent punish onto the Mad Lions. Mad way too overcommitted there underneath the tower. Dom One find themselves with a number of shutdowns. And Cannon, he's looking for a little more. Guys, uh this is what I'm talking about. I just don't think you need to force that hard. It feels like they are feeling a lot of pressure to move the game forward. Maybe they feel that they get outscaled. Maybe they feel that they are not in a position to actually win a slow played game here. You know, the ulti that you're going in for, it's basically just on barrel because Canyon is always going to ward hop out of that. The root from Ghost was critical though. Actually keeping Karzi away from Canyon. The follow-up was not there as a result. Then Four members from Matt are split off from Humanoid, so Showmaker is able to go in. The Shockwave, as well as the Flag and Drag, both immune by Showmaker. Yes, he does go down eventually, but Canyon is smurfing in this fight. The kickback, they clear out the minions, and then goes with the root on Arma under the tower. And I think the Arma thinks that he has way more damage than he does because he's looking at Ghost, and he is tr clearly trying to get that kill underneath the tower, ends up getting rooted up, and ends up losing his life as well. I think he has a lot more damage if that Shock Blast connects, right? He probably gets yeah. both of them if that Shock Blast hits. I will note as well, Elioia going for the Black Cleaver second yeah, I here. Notice that, yeah. No Sterak Shield. And no. he is getting burst quicker than you've seen. Some other Jarvans get burst at this world. Third Dragon more forget, damage. Though, will be taken from out. It's, it's more what damage. He has, yeah. yeah. He has more kill threat, but as you rightly said, much squishier. And definitely in a couple of these situations, if he did have that Sterak, he would have had way more survivability. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is one of those tough situations because often when you're playing from really far ahead, the additional CDR for your engages feels really, really nice. You can just fly in there be able to have that additional damage setting up for the MF with your ultimate every single time. And especially because Karzi is going for the lethality build, the MF ultimate cooldown gets pretty low and you're trying to kind of sync that up a little bit. And now we kind of look at Damwon in their entirety. So Ghost has now got three completed items. Showmaker is at two with a Void Staff finished up. Canyon has gone for the Steric second and has a stopwatch. Khan also has a stopwatch and a Void Staff as well. So you can see that Damwon's team fighting is getting stronger every single fight. And the reality is, is that if you're at a deficit and you're trading even or even slightly up in many of these team fights, that's only beneficial to you. Remember, we were at a 7k gold lead not too long ago, and that gold is slowly starting to diminish as Damwon continue to find these successful fights. Yeah, I mean, a couple of good fights in a row for Damwon. It's now about 4.5k. As you said, it was 7k earlier. But 
mad or at soul point. That is kind of what they have bought for themselves. Damwon will have to fight at this mountain soul. I don't think you can give it up with this type of composition. Yes, the Azir has high consistent damage, but your other three damage dealers are all very upfront, very burst heavy, and mountain soul's really difficult to deal with for those champs. So it becomes about the setup for Matt. We're three and a half away. They want to make sure that they have full vision control, get out there early, be there a minute in advance, full vision denial, and try to make sure that Khan has no options for TP flanks or for these really surprising angles. Showmaker just going to poke across the wall here, but you can see Kaiser. Oh, oh my god. Hey. He definitely has the damage, Vedius. Just needs to hit those Qs. Yep, Showmaker uh -huh, uh -huh. half. Yep, you are correct. Course, Showmaker not yet got the Seeker's Arm God, not got any armor. Wouldn't do too much against Surreal's Man That's a Man Moon three and a half fighter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of lethality into Armit's back pocket, and when playing into no armor, uh, yeah, it, it hurts, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> now, man, Showmaker looking like a range minion out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also want to note that stopwatch is a plenty. We've already seen a lot come out from both sides, but Jarvan has a stopwatch, Lee Sim with the stopwatch, Khan with the stopwatch, Humanoid with the Zonians. Canyon chucked out by Armour. I'm pretty sure that control ward does not spot the other ward it in the bush. bush. Deadly Flourish goes wide. And what Mad Lions are doing here is setting up some vision control around the Baron so that they can make down one face check into them. But also, this is preemptive. You know, you set this up for the next two and a half minutes and then you can play either Baron or the Mountain Soul. And one of the really big advantages against Canyon comps you get when you have the push is that your opponents can't get deep vision for flanking wards. You keep pushing them in, you know that they are on their side of the map, therefore they cannot have wards on your side of the map. And we'll see if Don Juan can get the barrel out there, try to get some sort of a deep ward, because it does feel like they're going to need that type of a flank. But as I say that, I mean, Khan is getting really strong. He's actually higher level than Arma now. Now has level 16, does have the Zonius completed. So he's on three items and will be truly a threat at this next fight. So Mad now starting to transition their vision down towards the bot side of the map. Humanoid needs to catch this wave, and Mad is saying the worst thing that could happen to us right now is if Humanoid dies. So let's give him a little bit of cover. We'll invest our vision towards the enemy blue side jungle, and we'll just offer that extra bit of protection. But that's a really great point that you made there, Azale. The fact that Khan is level 16, I think, is such a big deal. And with Don one grouping up as four in the mid lane for now, they also have a push in the top lane, they now get to control a little bit of the river. So they now, like, they have to spend their turn clearing out all this vision, investing their vision, but now you see Mad coming back on the map, replenish control wards. Oh, they're actually starting this one off, and look at the position of Khan. Yeah. This is how they get their flank. Might just be onto Humanoid Ghost now, stepping up towards where that blue buff would be. Khan laying in wait. The only player on this team without a world's trophy to his name, Khan. Looking to at least carry Darmon to a win here, perhaps to the semi-finals. Oh, Khan can flash like the match from Elioia in the pit now. Khan in prime position. Is it the return of the Khan? He can't quite get in yet. They've got to wait for Showmaker. He needs to TP back because he took that shock blast, and they may try to go once he TPs back in. Look at Khan's positioning. That blue trinket did come down, and he knows. So he's just trying to avoid the vision. Armin is aware of the potential flank. And We're going for a 50 He's going to go. He is flash. In. Khan has flash. Slices and dices up the Mad Lions. And they did not respect Khan. Damwon Kia cleaned the Lions off the map. They wear their pelt as a cape as they ace them in the river. And once again, Darwan showcased their fantastic team fighting prowess. Forcing that Baron looked like a risk, looked like a flip, but they were doing to Mad Lions what Mad Lions often like to do to everyone else, using it as a means to force a fight and getting the flank that Khan has been looking for. And they didn't have anyone marking Khan. That was the critical error from the Mad Lions. You have got to find Armut. He's got to find Khan and chase him around and look for the 1v1. Make the Kennen use his ultimate in the 1v1 or back off from that position. Because Armut is, com is committing to trying to land poke on the four-man squad, no one is marking Kennen. Kennen finds the angle, and that was all she wrote for this team fight, and that is such a huge error from Mad Lions. The question now is, can you actually get the Mountain Soul? Because Damwon have reset pretty late. Oh my god, the damage done. That tells the whole story. <laughs> it really does. Shockwave from Humanoid did land, but Khan just slicing and tearing through Mad. Now, Dragon started up. It will be the Soul. Humanoid TPing behind here. Khan doesn't have the slicing mouse for a couple more seconds. 
Mad Lion should be able to secure the Mountain Soul at least, but Humanoid is in no man's land. Caught by himself, Khan pops the stopwatch to stop the shockwave, but Mad Lion's still looking for fight. They are able to get the shutdown. Humanoid will die as well. Canyon on the flank in. now. Kazi, no bullet time. Quickness almost back up for Kaiser. Now it comes in. Armor's still alive, but Beryl's diving onto him. Showmaker pops the stopwatch of his own. Ghost healing up Beryl down. Kazi trying to get away, and Showmaker will die as well. And Kazi's still alive, but Canyon will take him out. Elioya and Kaiser versus Ghost and Canyon. And Elioya tries to get away, but the Deadly Flourish finds his mark once again. He dodges the Shockwave. Kaiser gets the heal with Gleaming Quill and will dodge back. Canyon, no Dragon's Rage, no Sonic Wave connecting. Ends up being a three for three trade. Wow. So, another massive fight takes place. Mad Lions will walk away with the soul, but Darmon should be able to continue their siege. They're not going to overcommit. Instead, they're going to keep pushing in these waves, get a couple more towers down, and now look at this. The gold dead even. This is why Darmon is the reigning world champions and why they are one of the favorites to win the whole thing. Absolutely. I mean, they're so damn good at playing out the mid and the late game. That is really where they do excel. The Shockwave does get Zonia's there. And, and, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, this is not that bad for Mad Lions in this specific play because they did come away with the Mountain Soul. They're trading yep. even on kills. Yes, that play by Baron was catastrophic. That let Damwon back in the game. But you are still now even on gold, and you have Mountain Soul. And that is very, very powerful against Damwon's comp. That is very much so an upfront damage type of style. Whew. So now we're in a position where Ghost is level 16, four items done, one of them being the Infinity Edge. Zonya's is now fully upgraded for Khan. And we talked about the late game comeback potential of Darmwan, and you really are seeing it with their composition right now. But now that's not to say that Mad's team fighting is necessarily weak. It's just that what Khan offers on this cannon is just so much utility and damage yeah. that in the right fight, you can see how much easier it is for Darmwan to be able to play out the 5v5. And I've got to say, you know, even though last game from Canyon was incredibly impressive how he snowballed his lead, how he has played from a deficit is even more oh, yeah. impressive. Yeah. Like, he has been outstanding in almost every single fight here on the Lee Sin. He is putting pressure on Karzi. He is dipping and dodging back and forth, putting the maximum pressure, never really falling down. And now he has GA plus stopwatch. He has the ability to throw himself into that back line. And we're likely going to see Damwon playing towards this Elder. Even catching the wave here to make sure that Mad could not get mid priority. Canyon will clear it out. Karzi gets the slow, but Canyon obviously on the Lee Sin can just dodge away. Look, they even move Ghost off onto a side lane, and then because they have the Azir turret here, they know that it's that much harder for a Kaiser engage to come through alongside a Jarvan. So Darmon just continuing to play the map. They have actually gotten themselves the goal lead. I think that's the first time this game but the fact that they've been able to claw back from the deficit they are in, just so impressive. And I can't get over how they played that Baron because like we were talking so much about it, Azel, and very much about how they need this cannon to get onto the back line. Yeah. So you need a flank. So, well, but how do they do that? When you don't have mid prior, when you don't have control, how are you going to get this deep vision into a flank? Will you force them into a fight on your terms? You decide when the fight happens. And to have that awareness and then to execute upon it, just, just always so impressive to watch. It's one of the reasons Darmwon has the Solar Flare lands into the Deadly Flourish. Stopwatch will stop the Zenith Blade from chasing him down, but Canyon once again gets the kick, knocks Humanoid back, and Humanoid dies. Elio trying to get onto the backline. Canyon and Bevel are low here. Canyon still has the GA. Showmaker caught up in the Cataclysm Bell. Will get killed off by Kazi, and Mad Lions may have found a gun here, but Khan is having none of it. Pops the Stopwatch, slices through Mad Lions. Khan, in his last worlds, doesn't even want to lose a game. He will kill off the Mad Lions as down one march through mid. Time and time again, Khan coming up huge with these team fight ultimates. And Damwon on the march to victory here in game two. Wow, an insane comeback from Damwon. They have the wave. Only Kaiser is alive. No, he's he's going to be shut down. Canyon won't lose his life either, and Darmwan are going to match point. There is an aura around Darmwan that just seems unstoppable. 2-0 over the Mad Lions. Showmaker said in the live video, we don't lose. <laughs> and so far, it has been true here against the Mad Lions, but Mad, that game was in their hands. They had an incredible early game. El Yoya on the Jarvan really needs to be highlighted how damn well he played. I just think they're going to want that Baron fight back so badly. Because really, I think if Armut just just marks the cannon, you just walk at the cannon and 1v1 him, 
that's your whole job. You don't need to do anything else. I don't think that, that Baron fight ever happens. I mean, I think we can go back earlier, Azale, because I think the reality is that you were talking a lot about it. They tried to force a lot of fights that you yeah. can argue they didn't need to. A lot of fights are going two for two, three for three, three for two in favor of Darwin in some of those situations. And a lot of those opportunities Darm one weren't exactly like closing the goal gap dramatically, but they were getting a second item or just yeah. enough to be able to be more competitive in the fights. And then it ultimately led to that Baron where they were on equal footing. I agree. I mean, it, it just looked like Mad felt pressured. It felt like they thought they were in a worse position than they were. They were winning sides so heavily. They put so much into getting this Jace ahead in the 1v1, but then you're allowing the Kennen to play 5v5 instead of being forced to just answer ways at his tower over and over again. Yeah, it was Dom 1, now it's Dom 2. We'll see if it's Dom 3 in just a moment's time. You can listen to Piercing Light on the League of Legends like official playlist on Spotify while we are in the break. Check out more LOL music in the League of Legends hub on Spotify. I told you, he's the EU freak. <laughs> hey, that was a good... <laughs> Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Now, while initially that game looks very positive, of course, Don Juan in the end taking it out. But the important thing that we start with is a graphic that our production team has lovely called Armut Good. It's an important one to look at because keep in mind, while Armut may have struggled individually in the 1v1, in the 3v1, 
He was an absolute monster. You might not be able to see it yet, but it's very important that you look at that jungle proximity. That's 41.9%. That is an all-time record. Even Shao Hu, the legend of top lane attention, has never seen that much, and obviously it paid off in the early game. Massive individual lead, plus 2.6K for Arma. Massive CSD advantage. And while that was solid, what Mad Lions did with this advantage in the mid game was what was so crucial for snowballing them into the massive lead. Yeah, obviously massive props to Dan One for the comeback, but there's just one small play that we want to talk about, about how good Mad Lions macro was in this game. And if this can't help them win, then God knows what will. <laughs> anyway, so quick uh, context here. They just took top tier one and uh, Armut has Eclipse, so he's really fed. This chase is absolutely unleashed on the map. The problem is he has no TP and Khan does. So let's watch what he does. The way League works, it's almost like a problem-solving thing, right? Do I put my Jace top and then not have TP? And if he doesn't have TP, then obviously bot lane can't lane because they're going to get TP'd on and Armut has to push the tier 2, which is too risky. What does he do instead? He runs bot side to push out Damwon's bot lane, so that means that it covers the TP disadvantage, right? The wave is actually in a pretty far-off state where Armut doesn't really need to be there. But because Armut's in bot lane now, who takes top wave, right? Really good adaptation for Mad Lions. Humanoid actually leaves mid wave and runs all the way to top. So there's another wave coming in from mid, just leaves it, runs to top and catches top wave. So he's attributing or like covering the top wave, which Armut should have taken, but he couldn't because he doesn't have TP, but Humanoid does. So Mad Lions are actually being proactive on the map rather than keeping lanes in the same state. So Armut comes bot, pushes Damwon's bot lane away. When the wave crashes, he goes to mid wave to catch mid wave, right? So you're not actually dropping any creeps on the map whatsoever. Now you've swapped your solo laners without actually having to lose a creep wave. What happens next is even better because after pushing out bot, they bring Kaiser with them, move into the top side jungle, keep these three pushing lanes. Humanoid pushes out a wave top, which sets up Armut to be able to come in, collect the wave, use that wave to pressure a tier two. So a wave that was under the enemy tier two was actually bouncing into Humanoid, he pushed it in, they take a top tier two, and their macro is great to see. This was one of the biggest points of how Mad Lions kept map control and how they got such a big gold lead. And I would love to call this segment Mad's path to victory. Sadly, it's copium with Cajal. Yeah. Because as we head back, no, as no, good, one more point. One, one more point. point you can have. You, all right, you, there's there a little bit more. There's a little bit. So basically, what happens is he TP's bot, right? <laughs> all that happens left is he takes top tier two, then he TP's bot behind the enemy bot lane. So really good wave control. As we walk, we can walk back now. It wasn't really there, but it's one last thing I want to mention. They take the top tier two, he TP's bot, then they get an extra two kills in bot. So they've just covered all three lanes so well. Yeah, and you can see the massive difference between gold difference of 15 between game one and game two as we rejoin the entire desk here. Chronicler, however, as good as that early game was, as good as Mad did perform, it all came down to a single large fight in which uh, Donald Kia kind of sort of popped off. Uh <laughs> This is this is this is spring Damwon, what we're seeing here. Because Damwon recently it just basically won another early game, so you don't need to play from a deficit. But what really set apart this team for me is how well they play to their outs. And this is something they do better than any other LCK team here. And yes, Khan should have been tracked. We're all aware of that. But fact remains that especially if you look at, for example, the LCK Spring Finals, where they were up into a similar deficit, 10k gold down against a Gen G. And they just, they somehow found the angles. And I think that you can look at what Matt did there and I think justly criticized him for not keeping appropriate track, knowing that the play can happen. But I don't think there's a lot of teams that can take that mistake and turn it into a one game. And that's what makes dumb ones so threatening. Even if they don't win the early game, they, they get away with it. They haven't lost a single game at Worlds, guys. What? It's, but... <laughs> it's terrifying, Chronicle. Thank you for reminding. <laughs> thank you for reminding us. It is. It is absolutely terrifying. Now, Steven, in your perspective, looking back at this game, what? It's easy to look at that fight and say this is the moment where all went wrong for Mad Lions. But if you had to kind of analyze what needs to change, what this team needs to do, what would you say? Mm, I think just uh, loving the like uh, Mister Scott that they did the, that game. Just like uh, because they had so nice early game. Like I feel like they had a good plan to like play around the, uh, the can, make him not play the game. And I think they did that very well, having some good macro. And after that, uh, uh, just like playing a bit like more slow towards the side lane. I feel like if they could push more the side lane and then push very deep division, it would be like much easier to clean up this game. But uh, they often went mid and then there was some like scrap happening. Didn't work out for too, too well for them, just maybe. Yeah. 
leave it slow into that <laughs> sense. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. They tried to push out sides every now and then, but then they just overgrouped mid, tried to force with Jarvan, which is good, but they're going way too deep into enemy vision. It's better to push the side, take the vision, and then try to overforce and try to get these tier twos. Mad Lions may be a bit too hyphy with the goalie that they were able to build. We'll see if they can stay calm, composed, get a strong early game, and transition it into their first win in the series. Of course, as we go to break, let's listen in on Mad's comms from their dramatic win versus LNG in the deciding base events in Sounds of the Game, presented by Bose. Okay, like careful. Like they, I mean, they're, they're looking plan, for an end. By the way, I'm going now. Okay, I'm going. Clear now. the way first. Okay, okay play okay, slow. Okay, oh. Play slow still. Play slow still. I'm f oh, am I? It's fortune. Okay, okay yeah, play yeah, slow. Yeah. Yeah. Careful. Don't die. I haven't told I know. I don't think they can end. Yeah. I don't think. Okay, I have no ult. I have no flash. Move flash. Take the wave. Take the wave. Take the wave. I'm going. I'm going. Take the wave. Take the wave. Flash. I can die. Take the wave. Take the wave. I'm going. I'm going. 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 Okay. I'm up in five. I'm up in five. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Nice! Good job. I'm gonna TP Nexus! Okay. I'm gonna TP Nexus! Nice! <laughs> I'm TP Nexus! Let's go! Play slow, don't die! Okay. Barbara, don't die! Fuck them! I, I give you vision, guys. We win, we win, we win, we win. Wait, wait, don't. Wait, wait where, where the fuck did I die, actually? Uh, okay. I'm really slow on hitting. It's fine, bro. Chase them. They want to hit them. Suicide, suicide for yeah, 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 I'm really slow. <laughs> nice. Good job. <laughs> come, come, come on. <laughs> Get. <laughs> There is no way we Wait, don't like shouting? this. Isn't it nice? was me. It was me. Holy. Someone is shouting. Uh, I mean, holy, yeah. Holy. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. Let me kill him. Get him. Get him. Oh my god, we won this shit ass game. Oh Malo is all in like, bro. Malo, I love oh, you. Shit. The new Axe Effect. Red Bull gives you 